Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on my channel. The title of this video is How Britain Overthrew a Democratically Elected Leader in its Guyanese Colony. If you are new to the channel, hello there and be sure to stay and check my other videos. I usually upload on Sundays and I talk about black British history, that is any history about black and other non-whites in the UK and the British Empire. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and keep notified. Link to my PayPal is in the description. The UK colonised Guyana, then called British Guyana, from 1831 until its independence in 1966. British Guyana was formed of three former colonies called Burbis, Demarara and disputed territory Essequibo that were formerly colonised by the Dutch. In 1896, British Guyana had their very first general elections for self-government. But it wasn't until the 1953 general elections where universal suffrage was applied, meaning not only men could vote, but women too, and much of the wider public. This general election was held on April 27, 1953. Five parties ran, while three of them had their politicians contest seats representing their parties Re the representatives of the two other parties contested as independents. The first three were the People's Progressive Party, National Democratic Party and People's National Party. The other two were the United Guyana Party and the United Workers and Farmers Party. With a turnout of 74.77%, the People's Progressive Party won 51.04% of the votes. The National Democratic Party won 13.16% and the People's National Party won 1.97%. The rest of the percentage were independents. The leader of the People's Progressive Party, Ch Chedi Jagan, became the new leader or chief minister of British Guyana. He also became the first Indian to be head of government outside the Indian subcontinent. He is regarded as the father of the Guyanese nation. Born on March 22, 1918 in the rural Guyanese village in Port Morant, he was born to Indian-born parents including his father being a sugar worker. They migrated to Guyana for work. He was born in a sugar plantation but his parents made sure he would not remain in one. After attending primary school in his village, he was lucky to attend Queen's College, the leading boys' school in Georgetown, Guyana's capital, at the age of 15. Two years later, he passed his exams and his father wanted him to study law in England. However, the financial possibilities for this to happen was limited and the alternative was to study in the USA, where he majored in dentistry. He spent seven years in the USA studying and learning more about Gandhi and the independence movement of India. He eventually became a Marxist. While doing his pre-med in his first two years, he witnessed the conditions of African Americans and realities of segregation, especially in the South. He initially studied at the Central YMCA College in Chicago to do his Bachelor of Science and then attended Northwestern University to study a Doctorate of Dental Surgery. He also briefly lived in New York City and studied social sciences, reading the writers of socialist thinkers. In 1942, he qualified as a dentist and met his wife Janet Rosenberg, a white woman. They got married a year later, in which neither family of the couple agreed. In October 1943, J Jagan returned to Guyana, with Janet following him a few months later. Because of his newfound politics, he became more concerned with the economic and social conditions of Guyana and advocated for political change. He started to become politically involved. Working his way up, he took the role of treasurer of the Manpower's Citizen Association, a political, power, a political party and trade union. He was affiliated with it from 1945 to 1946. The trade union, which represented sugar workers, was first registered in 1937 and by March 1939, the Sugar Producers Association recognised the union. The reason why Jagan left after a year of being in the union was because of his disagreements with the moderate leadership, which reflected the union's pro-employer stances. Shortly after Jagan, his wife Ashton Chase, another important figure for Guyana's nationalist movement, and H.J.M. Hubbard, a Marxist who was at the time the General Secretary of the British Guyana Trades Union Council, formed the Political Affairs Committee, a political party on November 6, 1946. In an article published by the Chedi Jagan Research Centre, Janet Jagan wrote, In his three years of existence, November 
1946 to November to December 1949, it worked with the trade union uh, movement, spreading new and progressive ideas, giving solidarity, both local and foreign, and in brackets, sugar and bauxite strikes and the Canadian seamen strike in George, Georgetown, teaching and holding classes in Marxism-Leninism, preaching and practicing internationalism, guiding working people into struggle and laying the foundations for a political party to lead the country to independence and to be equipped with a theory of scientific socialism. The PAC was successful in making a great impact on the Guyanese public through its first bulletin appearing in 1946, November. As the time went by, it increased the popularity of discussion circles and public meetings. PAC sought to address a number of contradiction issues that other leagues and associations failed to address, their leaders being unsuccessful in addressing certain issues. Additionally, they failed to communicate with the wider public. The British Guyana Labour Union, the Guyana Industrial Workers Union and the Manpower Citizen Association were only concerned with certain sections of the working class, while the British Guyana East Indian Association, the Portuguese Club and the League of Coloured People were more ethnically based. Some leaders failed to recognise the effects of capitalism, while others did not address the issues from a national perspective. The PAC began to convince the Guyanese masses that the real enemy was, the, was British colonialism and was responsible for the economic and political exploitation of the masses, using simple language in order to communicate with the masses. The PAC Bulletin analysed a diverse range of issues plaguing the Guyanese and other colonial societies, including poverty, class conflicts, capitalist exploitation and colonialism. Discussions were also conducted within the Bulletin on the limitations of available political groups, which catered to narrow sectoral interests, lacked permanence and national appeal, the control of leadership positions by a specific group of businessmen and professionals, the need for a national development programme that would address all the groups within the society, particularly the poor and dispossessed, the need for the implement implementation of the principles of equity and justice in all aspects of national life, and the need to end apartheid, segregation and discrimination, particularly against Africans in a number of societies, such as South Africa. On January 1st, 1950, the People's Progressive Party was formed. The first modern mass party in Guyana, formed by Chedi, Janet and other associates, it was a merger of the Political Affairs Com uh, Committee and the British Guyana Labour Party that was led by Forbes Burnham. The party was multi-ethnic, aiming to unite all ethnic groups alike in Guyana. Guyanese people of African and East Indian ancestry were divided because of the legacy of slavery and indentured immigration. The PPP was a left-wing anti-colonialist party with Forbes Burnham, an Afro-Guyanese lawyer, and Jagan as leader. Janet Jagan took the role of secretary. The PPP quickly gained a mass following uh, through organising demonstrations after the colonial, uh, colonial police shot dead five striking workers at a sugar plantation near Georgetown. Even there were general elections before 1953, political power disproportionately favoured the white colonial sugar owning elite. After the 1953 general elections, the PPP aimed to dismantle that power. During this election, the, the party set out a democratic socialist programme. They advocated for the Guyanization of civil service and foreign businesses, the adoption of a free health service and workmen's compensation, the secularization of the denominationally controlled education system, full legalization of trade union organizations and collective bargaining rights, land settlement schemes, governmental encouragement of new industries and future nationalization of the sugar industry. The party periodical Thunder was an important instrument for popularizing these proposals among the rank and file party members. Soon after winning the general election, there was immediate tension between the party and the co British colonial administration. Some of the main things that the British colonial administration disliked and what the PPP government did was its fomentation of strikes amongst the sugar workers, 
aggressively organised by the Guyana Industrial Workers Union, head by the PPP minister, Dr. Lakman Singh, for the alleged purpose of creating economic crisis, um, chaos. Its attempt to gain control of the civil service by abolishing the Public Service Commission, hitherto dominated by British civil servants, and quote-unquote packing certain statutory boards with PPP appointees. Its alleged intention to organise a quote-unquote people's police and to replace the British controlled police force, which the PPP demanded, d deemed unduly solicitous of management in labour disputes, and its alleged arson plot to set fire to business property and residences of Europeans and of uh, government officials. Although the party won the general election on April 27th, Jagan entered office on May 30th and lasted for 133 days until the suspension of the constitution by the British on October 9th. In August 1953, PPP's ministers called for a strike by the sugar workers who were fighting for the sugar producers to recognise their union. It was successful because by September 10th, the sugar industry was at a complete standstill, as noted by the British colonial governor. The Booker Group, which controlled 75% of the sugar industry, reported that the strike meant a loss of profits and that the present situation can only be dealt with effectively by the colonial office. Unless something is done, Booker's will cease to exist as a large firm in five years. Colonial Secretary Secretary Oliver Littleton said that the PPP had completely destroyed the confidence of the business community and all moderate opinion. He later said that the, that the UK took action before further deterioration showed itself in the action of the business community. Furthermore, he observed that a number of American or overseas firms were already abandoning their projects in British Guyana and that they were very apprehensive about the dangerous political climate. The danger was that conditions were being created that were inimical to investment, either domestic or overseas. Thus, the PPP were threatening the order of the colony and undermining its present economic stability. Although Littleton um, noted that the PPP's programme was no more extreme than, the, than Britain's Labour Party, the PPP's youth section, the Pioneer Youth League, was allegedly affiliated with the World Federation of Democratic Youth, a left-wing internationalist youth organizations, organization of youth organizations that align mostly with communism, but some democratic socialism and social de democracy. Because the era at the time was in the middle of McCarthyism and the Red Scare, Britain expressed fears of a communist revolution in Guyana. Winston was afraid that Jagan was a Marxist-Leninist and believed Jagan could introduce Soviet relations to South America. He said, we ought surely to get American support in doing all we can to break the communist teeth in British Guyana. Perhaps they would even send Senator McCarthy down there. However, declassified documents by the MI5 state that the party was not getting any financial support from any communist organization outside the country. However, it should be noted that before the PPP came to power and during its power, Jagan had relations with the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia aimed to increase relations with Latin America and offered political asylum to some left-wing exiles, such as Jacobo Arbenz, a democratically elected leader of Guatemala who was overthrown in a CIA-backed fascist coup. On October 9th, Jagan was dismissed from office and the PPP government was removed from power by the British colonial rule. Many of the ministers of the PPP were imprisoned. Chedi and Janet Jagan were also imprisoned for refusing to obey an order, um, restricting him for, uh, to Georgetown. This dismissal also led to the dramatic fall of contacts between Czechoslovakia and British Guyana. Since overthrowing nationalist leaders did not look good on Britain, the colonial administration had to come up with an excuse. The colonial governor, Alfred Savage, told the Guyanese public that ministers and the PPP were completely under the control of a communist clique. 
Their objective was to turn British Guyana into a totalitarian state subordinate to Moscow and a dangerous platform for extending communist influence in the Western Hemisphere. Littleton told the House of Commons that it was all part of, a dead, of the deadly design to turn British Guyana into a totalitarian state dominated by communist ideas. Britain was faced with part of the international communist conspiracy. Britain's delegation to the United Nations cabled Littleton a week before the overthrow and stated, if our action can be presented as firm step taken to prevent attempt by communist ele elements to sabotage new and progressive constitution, it will be wel welcomed by the American public and accepted by most United Nations opinion. It added, if on the other side it is allowed to appear as just another attempt by Britain to stifle, stifle a popular nationalist movement, effect can only be bad. To secure desired results, some preparation of public opinion seems to be essential. But the story does not end here. Even though he was overthrown, his political career did not finish. The PPP split in 1955 due to mostly racial reasons. There were now two political camps, the Jagannites and the Burnhamites. The Jagannites remained in the PPP, while the Burnhamites joined Burnham's new party formed in 1957, called the People's National Congress. Back in December 1953, Littleton said that the reason for the suspension of the constitution was to prevent further elections in British Guyana, stating that the same party would have been elected again. In the 1957 elections, Chedi Jagan won again, but governed more moderately in order to convince the British administration to facilitate decolonization. Relations between British Guyana and Czechoslovakia had regained. Preparing for the 1961 elections, Moses Bagwan, the leader of PPP's youth set and a journalist who wrote for PPP's publication Thunder, visited a 1960 Soviet state-sponsored international conference for journalists in Baden, just outside Vienna, Austria where he requested a meeting with the Central Committee of the Czechoslovak Communist Party. Bagwan went to Prague and met with an official named Novotny, who was the first secretary of the Czechoslovak Communist Party. In a letter that Bagwan had sent to the Communist Party, he said that he was empowered to interact with Communist parties to ask for assistance with the upcoming election. This was the first documented case of Jagan's government interacting with the Soviet government. In 1961, his party was re-elected again and at this time, Jagan became the premier of British Guyana and believed that the British would allow him to lead the country to independence. However, he was wrong. By 1961, the West identified the PPP as a communist party in contrast to the socialist PNC. After the Cuban Revolution, the US was concerned about Jagan. The PPP embarked on welfare programs in health, education and housing. They were popular and improved the standard of living of the people. But anti-Jagan forces led by Forbes Burnham's PNC were determined to not let Jagan lead an independent Guyana. They were supported by the CIA in plans to overthrow the PPP. From early 1962 to mid-1964, there were a series of strikes, riots and violent political and ethnic conflicts in Guyana. In February 1962, anti-government riots broke out in the African-dominated Georgetown. While being accused of being backed by the US, there was not enough evidence to point to that. Jagan seeked assistance from the Czechoslovaks, according to a June 1962 Czechoslovak document. The Czechoslovaks had been in contact with Jagan through visits by intelligence agents who were accredited to Czechoslovak embassies in Mexico and Brazil, and they sent a trade dele delegation, a trade delegation that included intelligence agent Ladislav Merkel in July 1962. According to Czechoslovak intelligence, the meeting was arranged through Rudolf David, who an Afro-Guyanese who was studying film in Czechoslovakia and had promised them every help, who was also promised a position of Minister of Education by Janet Jagan. 
In March 1963, an anti-government general strike broke out. This time, it was supported by the United States. Also in 1963, the British gave open support to the opposition forces led by Burnham and following orders of the US government changed the electoral system from first past the post to proportional representation for the 1964 elections. This was done deliberately to get rid of the PPP government. People's National Congress made an unlikely coalition with the anti-communist United Force to form the coalition government, even though PPP won the elections with the highest proportion of votes. When Guyana was led to independence in 1966, Jagan was now the leader of the opposition. In the 1968 elections, Bernan managed to get rid of his coalition partner, but the elections were rigged. The following elections in 1973 and 1980 were also rigged. After Bernan died in 1985, his successor, Desmond Hoyt, had also rigged elections. Back in 1969, the PPP declared itself a Marxist-Leninist party. Burnham portrayed its, himself as a socialist. Under him, Guyana became a republic and his government nationalised the sugar and bauxite industry and the banks and ended up with control of 80% of the economy. This earned him support from the communist camp. While Jagan and the PPP offered critical support for this, the PNC decided that the PPP was more critical rather than supportive. Some leading members of the PPP agreed with this and left to join PNC. A rigged referendum was held in 1978, passing with 97% of the vote, establishing the new constitution of 1980. It gave him more powers. Jagan's title changed from leader of the opposition to minority leader. State violence would worsen economic conditions and an increased number of Guyanese people ended up leaving the country. It was clear that Bernan was an opportunist rather than a socialist. By 1985, when Bernan died and Hoyt took over, the PPP embraced more of a mixed economy, as Jagan had now criticised the crumbling Eastern Bloc. The PPP and other opposition parties had come together to pressure Hoyt to agree to Fair, to hold fair and free elections. These were held on October 5, 1992, and Jagan was elected and sworn as president of Guyana. By this time, Guyana was in ruins as the country was indebted to the Imperialist International Monetary Fund and downgraded by government mismanagement. Jagan was president of Guyana until his death on March 5, 1997. A month prior to this, on February 15th, he suffered a heart attack and was taken to Georgetown Hospital before being flown by US military aircraft and then by a US Air Force helicopter to Walter Reed Army Hospital, where he underwent heart surgery. Unfortunately, it was unsuccessful and he died just 16 days before his 79th birthday. What we can learn here is that a courageous man who attempted to address the inequalities and the exploitation had him overthrown, not once, but twice, the second time with the help of the USA. Both the USA and the UK purposely orchestrated a plan to make sure that the newly independent Guyana would be run to the ground by the 1990s by opportunists. It also demonstrates the collaboration between companies and corporations and the government to make sure that latter, the former's interests are always protected while the nation's people are kept destitute.